uh, the ev- average school would be just full of writers or my pockets. school in particular. Wow. Okay, the so high your school, school of was... art and design. Okay. Um, I went there. Lady Pink went there. Ernie, um, other writers named Too Mad, Chino Malo, Don Juan, uh, Inca. These are just like a few of the names, but it always had this high percentage of writers that were going there. So I spent a lot of my time in, in art high school kind of politicking with them. That's like the coolest school I think I've ever fucking heard of. It, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty cool in that respect. Yeah, it was. There's two different sorts of educations going on right there. Yeah, exactly. And I was more interested in the education I was receiving outside of the class. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Podcast. Big shout out to the sharers and carers and everyone that's been supporting the podcast from the last 400 episodes plus. It doesn't go unnoticed or whatever number you're at, whatever time of the year you jump on and discover us. Big shout out to yourselves as well. Hold tight to everyone that's got the Television app free download, iPhone, Android, Free Street Culture Sports, where it's mini docs, full docs, DJ mixes, or the notorious podcast. We got you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, the mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boy. Hide out. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, inside the mansion that is Saatchi Gallery right now for Beyond the Streets, I have the esteemed pleasure to be frequenting and hanging out with some living legends. And uh, this guy is by no means any less than a legend, a king, a mighty of the New York scene and beyond. Photographer, graffiti writer from Star Wars and upwards. He's maintained steady incline in the world of graffiti street art to the point he's here. Uh, beyond the streets, it's the mighty days inside the place. That's quite a big introduction. Yeah. Thank you. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. Well, Thank it's getting you. up early for, right? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> How's it been? It's been pretty fantastic being here in London and presenting this exhibition for the public. Um, it's been a long time coming, mm. I think, and uh, I think it's possibly what's needed at the moment yeah i agree for everyone i agree I, it, it, <clears throat> for those of you that have not joined uh, the uh, parade of people that are coming in frequently in here uh Saatchi gallery in sloan square just off king's king's road uh it, it's it really is it feels like it has this energy that it almost goes full cycle back to the original hip-hop events we would go to all of a sudden it's just celebrated in a very different way isn't it it's, it's pretty amazing and this exhibition not only contains contemporary Temporary work by many of the artists that have been practicing for, you know, 30, 40 years. But it also has a lot of ephemeral elements to it um, Mm. that harken back to the early years of hip hop. Um, Some of the first tours with uh, The Clash Mm. and with uh, the New York, with Rocksteady Crew and uh, Futura 2000, Mm. Phase 2, Dondi. Um, and, and their first uh, kind of exposure to a European audience. So I was really happy to see that some of those elements were included in the show. Very much so. <clears throat> Even to the degree of some of the more unsettling early graffiti, where you almost had to kind of tip hat to the fact that, okay, these were racially provocative of their time, but without those, without those moments, you wouldn't have the flower that created the, the kickback, which became what it is now. The history that they've dug deep in is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I think that um, the origins of this particular culture have always been controversial in that it's very much a do-it-yourself movement, mm-hmm. um, and its origins didn't rely on corporate sponsorship or permission to do something or kind of asking somebody if it was okay, you know, it was very much about, you know, just going out and and doing it and Mm. and, and kind of finding a way to make it happen. And that extends not only to, not only from um, painting and kind of visual things, but also filmmaking and music as Mm. well, you know, um, permits and things like that were not even, you know, considered, you know, it was all about... uh, 
creating the work、mm. and making it happen. I think one of the things that struck <clears throat> me most with、uh, this exhibition is it's very telling how, like you say, from an early adopting、um, f- cheap to enter culture, there was this action of. Um, or, or f- authoritative action of you have to be great at it. You can't just come in and be all right. Just because you can grab the can doesn't mean you can be the. You've got to learn. Yeah, you have. You've got to、um, kind of go through the motions. You know, very much like jazz, for example. Like you couldn't, you know, get up on stage and start playing with Miles Davis or Charlie Parker or something、yeah, do like that. that. <laughs> you, you, you had to kind of earn it. Your right to be able to have that kind of access. To、yeah. people, so you know this culture is very much the same thing. You、mm. know, you've got to kind of gain your your you know kind of pay your dues and and get to the point where you can kind of stand on the same stage as some of the people in the show.、Mm, very much so, and like you said it, just then as well, you you echoed the idea of it, it evolving into new media and the fact that nowadays. I don't think it necessarily goes hand in hand, but there's certainly an argument that the people that started as kids loving hip hop in the '80s have gone through that evolution, and now they're working at the top of the market in companies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, it's it's important to keep it in perspective. In that, I don't think anyone in the show kind of aspired to be at this level. You know, it was very homegrown and, and very much something that.、Um, You know, you kind of thought, well, you know, I'll I'll be doing this for a little while, and maybe I'm going to move on to something else eventually.、Mm. And it kind of evolved into what what it is now、mm. as a, as a culture, as a as a global culture. Yeah, that and actually that is something to really and, and I think that sort of helped a lot、um, because it maintained a kind of integrity. Without question, yeah, integrity is everything when it comes to hip hop as a culture. And you're right. There wasn't. You walk around here and you don't get a sense for any second that something was、um, premeditated. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it was definitely not premeditated. None of this.、Um, you know, it just sort of, kind of grew into what it is now. You know, in a very natural way. You know, I kind of remember.、Um, you know, while I was still painting trains and I was still doing that in the early '80s, and.、Uh, You know, I kind of made my first paintings as a as a kind of experiment, and、uh, and after that, I thought, wow, you know, I, I I could do this. You know, this is really interesting.、Mm-hmm. So my my evolution was more about exploring myself as an artist and、mm-hmm. and trying something new. That creates vulnerability as an artist, doing what you're doing, and also exercising it to the highest level of risk of.、Um, Uh, of uh, resilience and uh, uh, attack on <laughs> the Joe public and, the, and, and society as a whole. Why is graffiti? It, it's vulnerable, isn't it? It's it's vulnerable. It's open to many different things, but I think people people's in, interpretations of it now are a lot more informed than they than they were. Say thirty, forty years ago, when it was all kind of under the same umbrella,、mm-hmm. and I think you know an exhibition. Like this one, and beyond the streets, London gives people an opportunity to sort of、um, take it in and digest some of the many different personalities that are in this show,、mm. and, and and look at things on an individual aspect. What do you think provokes the most in terms of you know someone like you say they come in and they take a real look at the three sixty of the culture. Well, it could be provocative in terms of it's always its origins will always be political,、uh, whether the political message is overt or not. But it'll always be out there. However, you know, for myself personally,、mm-hmm. you know, my my work was never really that political. There there are maybe subliminal messages here and there, but it's not really so in your face.、Mm. And、uh, we will get into yours now.、Yeah. This is how we're going to carry on because I'd love to hear some stories. I want to get an understanding of you at the age you were in New York, that environment, the the, the, the landscape. But give me a, a description of the age you started and what what was to be expected within your world at that time. Well, I started painting in 1976, painting subways. About the same year that I entered a kind of special art high school,、mm-hmm. and、uh, the environment in New York City was. Really economically destitute. It was kind of like the rest of the country had forgotten about New York 
because it was kind of so bad. But out of all that, you know, um, something good things were happening in, in many ways, in many underground ways. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I would have considered what I was doing at the time art, mm -hmm. so, you know, so to speak, but, but I knew I was doing something creative or mm. I would not have continued putting so much time and energy into it. Uh, and it just, as I said before, it was just sort of evolved into what it is today. How old were you when you started? Oh, 15, 16. Where did the name Days come from? I just kind of made it up from the different letters that I tried on different hats before I found the one that could fit right. Mm -hmm. Trying different letters that sort of fit together rhythmically. Who are your and influences? Then it Who are your influences in this? In the I scene? mean, in the culture, yeah. my influences were pretty vast. I mean, it were people like, you know, Tracy 168, Phase 2, Knock 167. Oh, geez. Uh, just to name a few. But also I had influences outside of that, like movies like Shaft and The French Connection and Superfly uh, and music like, you know, James Brown, mm. or cartoonists like Robert Crumb and Zap Comics, Mad Magazine. Nice. Th those things all kind of informed me as an artist. Those are some names actually that don't get enough because everyone, you know, immediately leans to Baudet and, and yeah. they're like, you know. No, I was never really that influenced by Vaughn Baudet. Mm. I was, it was more Robert Crumb. I love that. And Mad Magazine. I love that. It, and it's funny because they, they're, they're snapshots of, of the, the era of the time. Like when you say those names, I go straight back to that yes. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great visual reference. Yeah, 100%. Tell us about the first time you, uh, you went out painting. What was the, what was the I vibe? mean, you know, I was, I was young and, and, and definitely trying to kind of get information in a non-internet world yet. <laughs> right. You know? So I was kind of hanging out with older people or my contemporaries and... You know, the first time I went painting, it was pretty much kind of a mess, mm. you know, in the wintertime, freezing, cold. New York freezing. It was, yeah, it was snow on the ground and, um, you know, but I was so excited and the adrenaline was so high that I, I knew I had to continue doing this, at least just to get to the point where I was satisfied mm. with, with with what I was doing. Was the satisfaction be, was the satisfaction ahead of the adrenaline? Because of course, you know, you're hitting a lot of endorphins when you're doing things like that. And for a kid, that's a lot. But was there a, was it more about the, oh, I've got to do that again to make it better? Or it, to it, develop? It was both. Really? It was both because, uh, I mean, people don't realize that it, a lot of it is very premeditated in that, you know, there are sketches that go into it. There's time speaking with other people. There's the act of going out and painting. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there's the process of trying to document the work in photographs, which meant spending countless hours on a subway platform waiting to, for your work to arrive so you could photograph it with some cheap 110 camera. <laughs> so, yeah, there was, it pretty much, you know, took up my whole life. You know, then Dude, that just it's from uh, from the mid 1970s to the early 80s, it just took up my whole life. Your whole life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was didn't have much room for other things. Okay, you know? right. So give me give me an example <laughs> of a day in the life of days at the age you were. So oh, it's hard to say. Like you know, it, it's hard to say. But uh, you know, you wake up. You 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 know, I was in school still, so I'd go to school and. You know, I, you know, the lunchroom was packed with writers. You're talking to them constantly. You have your school assignments, but on the side, you're still drawing in your pad. And so the whole of your school, or, or uh, the ever, average school would be just full of writers? or My school in particular. Wow. Okay, the so high school, school of art and design. Okay. Um, I went there. Lady Pink went there. Ernie. Um, other writers named Too Mad, Chino Malo, Don Juan. Inca, these are just like a few of the names, but it always had this high percentage of writers that were going there. So I spent a lot of my time in, in art high school kind of politicking with them. That's like the coolest school I think I've ever fucking heard of. It, it was pretty, pretty cool in that respect. Yeah, it was. There's two different sorts of educations going on right there. Yeah, exactly. And I was more interested in the education I was receiving outside of the class. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was into. Anyway, yeah. So that's school would be that, it. and then we're, we're, what after happened? that, it would yeah. be um, you know, kind of hanging out uh, subway platforms, just looking at trains, just looking at stuff, and and finally painting, you know. 
but as I said, there was a lot of preparation before it. Mm -hmm. Just checking the, the, the tripod stands are in. Uh, we are actually live in That's, Saatchi Gallery. It's no joke, is it's it? It's great. It's lot, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of young people here. I'm seeing a lot of little kids here, and yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I just got literally got lost in the 80s days for a second there. Okay. <laughs> literally. I was just like, this is amazing. Um, it, it, it sounds to me like uh, that lifestyle, it ha it, there has to come a point where it gets. If you're one of many that are doing that any singular time, there has to become a moment of a ceiling where it's too hot, it's too busy, there's too many kids, there's too much action. This ended up what happening, right? Well, you know, I, I kind of felt like what we were doing was so insular in a way because we're kind of making work and we're doing things and communicating with each other and, mm. and not with an outside audience. So in, in that way, the, our world was kind of smaller mm. than what it is now. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I guess it's the bubble. It's the bubble effect, right? Yeah, I mean, you talk to people about, say, CBGBs, which was happening at the same time, and, you know, they're all, their crew or their people was maybe like 200 people max, yeah. and, and the bands kind of went to see each other and support each other. Perhaps I, that, scene, that scene kind of creates that vibe. <laughs> it's all right, that's, that's co-starring right okay. now. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> it's love, it's love. All good. Um, I think when a city is under such strain and poverty, arguably, sounds a bit extreme, but I, I'm guessing, yeah. you have to find your tribe. You have to find those You pockets. have to find your people. Uh, and uh, I, you have to find your people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when, when you find they're not your, really your audience. They're, they're your audience, but they're also your peers, mm. you know, and, and their criticism and their... Uh, acceptance really means a lot. It's everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, totally. And then as we move into, you know, the noughties, obviously the trains, they won't hit so much, but everything rolled into the streets, didn't it? You Eventually know? it did. Yeah. Uh, but, but that happened, I want to say, it started to happen kind of in the mid to late 80s. Mm -hmm. and, and that at that point, I had stopped painting trains. What did you go on to do? Well, I just kind of, you know, rolled into, you know, this career kind of, of of my studio practice and exhibiting work and, and working on projects mm -hmm. um and that kind of took over yeah and i mean i still do uh public work you know mural projects and things like that but um yeah it's an important i'm not just kind of in the studio but i'm also outside and interacting with people working with students um collaborating mm -hmm. with people that's always been important to me. Brother, your intuition was correct, and you took a jump into a, at a time where doing exhibited work of this guttural, creative place, being graffiti, you could have been seen in a very different light because of the purest aspect of graffiti. It's taken a long time, I feel, to get to this moment in history, you know, here in, in, in London. It, it's taken a while, you know, um, but... But I'm glad to be here, as I said, and uh, you know I, I'm interested in seeing what happens after this, mm. and and how you know it evolves into the next thing. You pioneered it. You you did it with the stabilizers off, and no one was here like these exhibition exhibit houses now. It well, I need to give credit, you know, to the staff at the Saatchi Museum mm -hmm. and the staff at the Beyond the Streets show and in particular Roger Gassman. Hell, hell I, yeah, I need to Roger. give him uh, a lot of them all a, quite a lot of credit for pulling this off. Mm. Um, rare. Yeah. Extremely rare. <laughs> big shout out Roger. What's up? Uh, yeah, big up Roger. Hold tight Roger and everybody else. Chino, all the gang. Um, Chino. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And the UK side of things as well. Drax and uh, uh, yes. Teach and the likes, you know. Um, Quick question before we sign out, because my man's got a flight, you understand? You know, he's literally, we literally are here very early doors here, and my brother. Um, what, what kept you going? You know, I, I think that my, you know, I've had kind of ups and downs over the years, but I think what keeps you going is the realization that this is what you, what you have to do inherently. It's a bit like a kind of a disease painting, you know, and continuing to be creative, you know, in order to to exist mm. so that mm. keeps me going fearless 
Yeah. Fearless, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Yes. You know, holding your name and holding it high because that's what it is. You're there to support that. My brother, thank you so much. No doubt. Come through, man. Yeah, Thanks. Thank we're you. Here. We're out here. Killer Keller podcast out like right. fashion, goddammit. All right. We're right in the mix right here. Central, Saatchi, be here. We're at, it's open now until the 3rd of May. Um, be part of it. Come and check it out. Um, Days in the house, he'll testify. We have it was a fashion. Don't talk to anybody I wouldn't, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither did they. Stay lucky, people. Peace. All right, good. Okay. Um, right.